for just basic background on me. I've been an activist ever since I was 17 years old. And so I've always maintained a passion and love for humankind. And it doesn't matter where they are. We deserve to speak up when there is injustice because if any day we face injustice, and I'm many, all of us here <laughs> for, have faced injustice at this point in time, we would like our fellow human beings to speak up for us. And I think the Muslim community specifically has been far neglected when it comes to fellow human beings stepping forward and speaking up for us. And there's been so many misconceptions spread. I as, I, as an activist, like to think that I did not believe most of them. But as I was reading the Quran, and I was surprised at what I was reading, that itself told me that there was some internal um, bias or there was some internal misconceptions that uh, made its way through. If I was surprised that it was it was so beautiful, if I was surprised that it was it was so moving, and anti-capitalist and <laughs> and feminist and just and all of the wonderful things that um, great powers in the world don't want us to follow for obvious reasons. But it was the women of Gaza, specifically, that put a fire in me that I don't believe will be extinguished in my lifetime. It was women who, in any other circumstance, would not need a hysterectomy. But because their hospitals were destroyed, because their access to medical supplies were destroyed, they lost the ability to have kids in the future of their own. They lost their children. And that hit very close to me because I myself had a hysterectomy at 27 years old. I have PCOS, it was very severe. Um, but I still had that choice. I had the choice to save my life, I had the choice and I, and I had the access to the, the medical care that I needed. I had the access to the, the aftercare that I needed from such a thing. And so when learning about the trials and tribulations that the Gaza women are facing now, specifically with the lack of health care, because what people aren't realizing, they, they, see, the, they see death, they see suffering. And still, most people are like, that, that's very sad, but they're suffering all around the world. And they don't take the time to think into the future of how long that suffering is actually going to last. It's not just the hysterectomy. It's the grief that comes from it. That's lifelong. It's the bodily changes that come from it that are permanent. Some can even worsen with time. Some guys and women are now disabled. When, if given the proper health care, if not targeted for greed, because that's what it comes down to, that's all this is that we're seeing, is greed. The most horrific things that could possibly happen to humankind, we're witnessing live on our devices every single day. And not a single person who is a victim of it deserves it. So that lit the fire. But seeing them go through that, seeing them hold their dead children, Look into their faces, call them beautiful, kiss them all over, tell them that they love them. And then thank God. That's what got me to pick up the Quran. Because I couldn't understand. 
my own relationship with God has been very tumultuous over the years. And I have questioned his existence for far less. Here they lost everything that they held dear. And not only did I see women, thank God, I saw women even say they were happy on that day because their children were going to Jenna. And so the very least that I could do in that moment was read the Quran. That's the bare minimum as far as I'm concerned. To know the very spirit of where that derives from, most of us, inshallah, will never know that pain. And to see them, to see the women of Gaza face the most tremendous pain possible Anyone here, if anyone were to ask you, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen to you? The mothers in here would say losing my children without, without a shadow of a doubt. And that's what, they've, that's what they're facing. Some women have lost every single child they had. And still prostrate before God. Still are steadfast in their faith. How can I not be moved? Honestly, how can I not be moved? How can I not see Islam as truth after that? If the women in Gaza have lost not only everything, but some are facing the possibility of never regaining it back. If those of you know the, the, young, the young woman, she's in her, young, her early 20s, Bassan. She was a content creator. Most, some people mistakenly think that she's always been a journalist. No. She was a content creator just like the young, the young girls in, in everywhere. And she and a few other young women right now are the only reason why we even know what's going on in Gaza. And she has started beginning her videos of, this is Bassan, I'm still alive. I still don't know whether that is fortunate or unfortunate. To, can you even comprehend what kind of courage that takes when you are among rubble? She was walking down the street and saying, I'm seeing pieces of human beings everywhere. I can't. That's her every day. And she's still picking up that camera. She's still speaking in English. She's still talking to the world. Even when she has lost her faith in humanity, even when she thinks that humanity has forgotten about her and her people, she still trusts in Allah enough to continue to pick up that phone and document what's happening. And she is only, I believe, 22 years old. It's, it's something so extremely young. Most of us will not have that courage in a lifetime. Consider how many lives she's changed how many viewpoints she's changed, how many misconceptions she's completely obliterated. The women of Gaza, how many misconceptions they've obliterated, how many people they've turned to Allah, simply through remaining steadfast, simply through remaining who they are, unapologetically, without being moved. Facing tanks, tanks, bullets, bombs. I have quite literally seen footage of them looking up at the sky as bombs are dropping.
still praying to Allah, still trusting that Allah will get them through it. And not just that, I've seen some convinced that they will not survive the night and are simply asking Allah for a peaceful transition to the other side. I don't know if any of you have seen the, the video that went viral of the ambulance workers sharing the last swig of juice. And they were like, this could be our last drink of juice. Don't give me too much. I want my death to be peaceful. And they were laughing. They were laughing. Facing death, still doing the work, knowing that ambulances are being targeted and bombed. They still had joy. How could I not be moved? How could I not read the Quran? And after reading the Quran, how could I not revert? It's a phenomenal thing. And if what we're seeing now is not further proof that it has been written, I don't know what is. To have the greatest powers, the, the greatest political powers in the world with all their money, with all their reach, with all their tactics, with everything that they have, still not moving an inch in the people of the world, still have people showing up 300,000 deep to protests. We're facing unprecedented times where no matter how much money is being spent, no matter how much, how many lies are being spread, the people are no longer believing it. And that, all credit goes to Allah, of course. But the people of Gaza is what sparked that revolution. Make no mistake about it. And not only did they wake people up to the suffering in Gaza and the injustices in Gaza, now people are starting to wake up to Congo, and Sudan, and Yemen, and Armenia. All of the different suffering around the world, all of, all of the suffering around the world, people are waking up to, and people are acting on it. In my 17 years of activism, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like this. We are living in a time where the world is going to look very different very soon. Right now we're witnessing single voices changing the world. I'm not talking about myself. Moaz, Isan, Plastinia. Yes. They're single people, not just single people, single young people in their early 20s that just a month ago was doing what the rest of us were doing, sharing on TikTok. The, 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 the video went viral of um, Moaz documenting Ramadan in Gaza and the beauty of Ramadan in Gaza. That's what he was doing just this past Ramadan. Within that short period of time, he went from documenting Ramadan and the different festivities surrounding it to documenting the deaths of over 11,000 Palestinians. He single-handedly is the voice for Gaza, along with the other the now journalists. They were content creators, and now they're official journalists. Gen Z is changing the world. It's time for the rest of the generations, including my own, millennials, to understand that the only way forward is not just through raising them up, but doing exactly what they're doing. I don't just want to sit here and say how much Gaza has changed the world without also bringing up the fact that a call to action is needed in the understanding that this is a marathon. We are not boycotting these companies and then next week getting our coffee. It's for life, and what an easy thing. 
how easy it is to give up anything that has to do with capitalism when the women of Gaza have given up their children. What an easy thing indeed. This is the start of the fight. It's going to get harder. We're going to face far more discrimination as the Muslim community. It's already happening. We, we've, we're already getting news stories of attacks of Muslim girls in the subway, having their hijabs being ripped off of them. This is our time to join together as sisters as a united front. The women in Gaza have left all fear behind. The least we can do, the, very, the bare minimum we can do is do the same and come together as one community. But I will say this, just being honest as a new revert, but from what I'm observing so far, is there's already a lot of segregation in the Muslim community. There's already a lot of fear of getting out of the comfort zone. If we're going to make it through what's coming, it has to be all of us, all of us.